Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode very briefly, in which I've been fairly busy off-camera doing some work to the lovely Scorpion, now rebranded the Word Bearer. So, I've took a lot of cues from the Deepwater Guard, we are treating the old mainframe very, very kindly, and we have these lovely decorations now pretty much everywhere. We have some cram cannons, of course, we have some missile pods, we have a whole lot of wood, we have some new flags, again, and we even have some anti-air cannons. <laughs> Ultimately, this is probably one of the most orky looking creations I've ever made, and was certainly a lot of fun working on. On the inside, I have actually altered the AI quite significantly, and I've been adding a lot of extra armor. Hopefully, all of these things will come together beautifully, and, well, if nothing else, will certainly make the lightning hoods a little bit confused, and hopefully a little bit scared. Clearly, you can see, we are going to be very kind to those who we capture. So, Wordbearer, how do you feel now that you are an official member of the Lathrixian Legion? Please kill me. Excellent. Hello, Scorpion in the campaign. How are you doing? Because you're about to have a bit of a change of heart. Please retrofit into the Wordbearer, which is sadly slightly more expensive. That looks so weird when it first starts converting. Before we send the word bearer to spread the good news of corn to the Lightning Hood's base, I think we should show these tech priests the power of the word bearer against some of their lesser forces. That, and I just want to make sure the word bearer actually works correctly now that I've changed a ridiculous amount of stuff on the inside. And hello, you have a moving force over there. That's interesting, because you... The fortress is the base of all of the faction's power. So I assume this was the main base, but maybe it's not. I'm really hoping it's not, honestly. Perhaps it is, it certainly seems like it. Either way, let's go and kill some stuff, and I think I will bring some of our lovely... blood fangs with us. I've just thought of something incredibly annoying. If we do attack some of the other areas here, there is a very real possibility that the White Flyers will declare war on us. I think it may make more sense for us to go straight against their base and simply try to take it out. Rather than killing every single tile, because then we'll have to fight a war on two fronts, which won't be quite that pleasant. Now, the issue here is how much of this space do the White Flayers own? Because by the looks of the- okay, so this is Grey Talon. Okay, good. That means we can go upwards this way and, and the Grey Talons will be our next enemy. That's absolutely fine. I just wanted to know if I had to go through the White Flayers or the Lightning Hoods after I take this base. Apparently I don't. So, I think we may as well kill the Lightning Hoods and then declare war straight away on the Grey Talons, assuming that this is their main base. And there we are, all of our forces crashing into the Lightning Hood Fortress, and apparently the little force over here is now moving to engage us afterwards. That's probably going to be very, very annoying. There we go, let us spawn in absolutely everything. Mr. Wordbearer, you can go here. Blood Fangs, you can go... Pretty much anywhere you like, and then the awesome Lal's Will will go at the back. I want the word bearer to spawn in first. Can I also spawn in a couple of blood fangs with it? That would be great if I could. Okay, so I can spawn in one blood fang. Well, that seems reasonable. And let's jump into the blood fang instead of the word bearer, because the word bearer's health is a little bit more weird, since the front section is very, very vulnerable. This battle took around about three minutes to load in and almost crashed the game. I don't know what was happening, but I suspect it's probably something to do with these utterly amazing looking floating missile turrets which really do look absolutely awesome. We then have these towers, which I don't really know their purpose, and we have the main tower. 
This thing looks awesome. Also, that lovely red line is the new version of the laser in the word bearer. We couldn't keep their colours of that sort of cyan green colour. Instead, we have blood red. And so, let's unpause and see what happens. So the laser is definitely doing some serious work there in the middle. Whoa, we are taking no damage. I thought we was. Actually, yes, we are. Thanks to that laser. Me going mad there for a second. As opposed to normal, where I'm completely sane. The laser still focusing on us, but hopefully we can kill it before it kills us. Honestly, whoa. Yeah, it's not looking good for this Okay, so the game seems to have recovered. What on earth was causing that lag? Maybe the EMP damage there? I really don't know. I guess we should continue then. Incoming cram cannons from the word bearer. Doing some serious work, actually. Oh, two of the cram cannons just hit up here, but... The explosion wasn't actually seen because of the amount of explosions already happening. Okay, at this point, I think we've ta we have took away pretty much all the weaponry, and we may have actually killed it. I thought we had just taken away the weaponry, but no, this thing is definitely dead. Uh, pause time for a second, please. I don't know if it's AI dead or not. I, ha I didn't see it say that, but... If it is, I would like to capture it. I just don't think we're going to be able to, especially with this lag. Trying to move or do anything is just so difficult. Oh, yep, it is AI dead, but it is also exploding. I think that's the source of the lag, just so many explosions. Also, this is as fast as my building cursor goes with this much lag. Come on, let me out, thank you. Let me out. No, please let me out. No, <laughs> let me go to it, please. <laughs> you suck. Oh, I kept on trying to turn off the boots, but for some reason it wasn't responding. Oh, well, at least we'll get a lot of resource from it. Should have went into the blood fang instead and just manually moved it towards the target, but I doubt it would have happened. Either way, under new management. Corporate mergers come in many forms, and this one happens to be a hostile takeover. The Lightning Hoods, under the guidance of the Thirteen Sages, have decided it would be better for them to serve under you than to be eradicated. Always looking for the best angle to keep themselves above water, they have latched themselves onto a shooting star. Excellent. Oh no! War between the player and the white flyers! That is so irritating. Okay. Nothing's moving yet, but we need to get back there. I also want this resource zone. Uh, it's only 40,000 material. We, we could ignore that. Okay, so I still want to fight against the Grey Talons. So I may end up warring two factions at once. So all of you, except for the vehicle. So am uh, ammo barrels, everything else, move back there. You stay there and fight. Um, I think this will go okay. Okay, so both ammo barrels and all three blood fangs are going back to defend against the white flyers. At the same time, the Malal's will and the word bearer, trying to think of the name of it there, are going to defend against this force. I think that will be okay. I really need to defend against this so that I can put down a harvester as soon as possible so that we have five more resources per second, which is honestly a pretty big deal considering defeating the Deepwater Guard only gives you three per second. An extra five would be amazing, especially since we will be fighting on two fronts now, which is going to be pretty darn terrifying. The only upside is that both enemies are coming from the same sort of area, so we don't have to split up that much. Whilst we wait for the enemy to reach us, let's go ahead and add some lovely, lovely material gatherers to the Malal's will. There we go, let's just put all of these along here, and that should give us all of the material fairly quickly. Or not. Oh, we don't have enough engine power for this. Yeah, the Malal's Will has a very, very small engine since it doesn't really need it for anything. Well, I'll just leave them as they are then. 
So against us, we have the Beluga Elite four times, and we have the Eclipse. I have no idea what the Eclipse is. Hopefully, we can defeat it nice and quickly. Okay, let's get everything nice and sorted. Are you ready to hear the word? So there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the enemy flyers, for some reason, have spawned in the water. The bad news is that we can't spawn in both the Malal's Will and the Word Bearer at the same time. And I have spawned like this, so we are about to hit some land. This just isn't going to go well, honestly. Please don't take too much damage. That's all I'm asking. It's not much. Oh, really? Are you really going to bounce off that? Why did you... I can't even see that on the map. That's what I hate, when you can't see the land on the map, but it spawns in anyway. Okay, well, we lost one of our missile pods and a whole chunk of health, but we have at least now got over that. We have killed one enemy by disabling its AI. And the second one as well. So that's going pretty darn well. The third is now being focused on, and the fourth was already too damaged. Well... That was pretty darn effective, I have to say. We're also running out of fuel. I'm thinking of just putting a refinery on the word bearer itself, since it's the only thing which actually needs the fuel. So that is the Eclipse, which has a really nice anti-missile laser system. Although, some EMP has already hit it, and is it going down? By the looks of things, yes. Manually turning our craft, so we're now facing it a little bit more in case I want to try and capture this. And the Malal's will is now free. The regular missiles there doing their work. And cram cannon shots incoming. Okay, guys, stop, 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 stop. No, already too damaged. I am not good at capturing at the moment. Oh, we lost both missile pods. That's so sad. Well, at least we're going to ram it anyway, causing some damage to ourselves. Yay! Well, corn cares not from where the blood flows, I suppose. Only that it does. Or oh, oil, in this case, again. Stare into the eye of chaos. All of our forces are converging in this area, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and capture this resource zone. Not so much for the resources itself, but just to slow down the reinforcement speed of the White Flyers. Once we've done that, we will also declare war on the Grey Talons, and hopefully we will start making our way north. So it turns out I had derped up and one of our mainframes simply wasn't transmitting. So this one gun here, this lovely AI gun, didn't actually help to defeat the enemy base. That was kind of sad, honestly. Meanwhile, the first battle against the White Flyers is about to begin versus the Spike. And we are sending in a single Blood Fang, which hopefully should get the job done. There it is, the spike, using advanced cannons and little, little missiles. Go. Okay, the flak is now being used and has done a little bit of damage. The main gun hit a couple of times there, and thankfully our anti-missile systems was more than enough to distract and destroy the missile shot at us. Stop being so quick, you are really annoying, and actually surprisingly hard to kill. The flak is doing next to nothing. We need to improve our flak weaponry, apparently. Did you just fire an anti-missile against my anti-missiles? Because that is so weird if you did. There we go, finally going through the outer armor. Is that regular metal or is that alloy? I can't really tell. Okay, this may take a while. It's in the death spin. There we go. Now you go to the water and we'll finish you off there. Or we could just capture you. Stop. Turning, turning off. It's already going down. We can simply capture it and take its resources for our own. So sadly, by the time I reached it, it had sank to such a level it counted as sinking and was below 80% health and thus it simply destroyed itself. Which is incredibly annoying. Now, I was there at the last second, but apparently even the blueprint didn't save to me, which is a shame. 
Either way, though, at least we've got some resources out of this. I am considering making a boarding vehicle of some kind, but the issue with that is it wouldn't have that much use in combat and would just end up getting killed over and over again. But it is certainly something I am really thinking about. Now, one thing we need to quickly do to the word bearer is this. So, we should have shield systems. There we go, the shield projectors. Turn them to reflect. And this is when an enemy is within 5,000 meters of us. Which, of course, is you. There we go. If it's less than 5,000, turn on the shields, and the other control block will have the opposite effect. If there are no enemies within 5,000 meters, or there's simply no enemies at all, then what I would like to do is once again shield projectors and turn off. This way we should be able to save a lot of fuel by simply only having the shields on when fighting is actually happening. Now, we need to find some space to put a refinery. There we go, a really small refinery was just about placed where we just was. So as you can see, the fuel is slowly going up when this thing is not actually active. As soon as we spawn it in, however, the fuel goes back down again. You know, I think something is really annoying the White Flyers. I can't think of what it could possibly be. I mean, I have all these mainframes here of their friends, I'm keeping them safe and toasty. They're just really angry people, apparently. Meet Blood Blood, the derpy Bloodfang. He's the special one. Okay, so then, let's get ready for the first proper fight versus the White Flyers. So, we have the thing I can't pronounce, the Sin Eater, the Devourer, which I think is the melee one, which is absolutely terrifying. Oh dear, and then we have the Judgment. Now, the Judgment is an incredibly difficult craft, at least in terms of just killing the darn thing. If I recall, though, it doesn't have laser defenses, at least the last time I fought it, which could be about a year ago now, so... I don't know if that's correct anymore. Let's pretend it is and be really thankful we have the Word Bearer. Word Bearer, meet Judgment. Essentially, this is your White Flyer equivalent. Because the word bearer is the transformed version, the enlightened version of the scorpion, which is their godly craft. Well, this is the white flyer's godly craft, everyone. So let's see which is better. Okay, you can go there and you can go nice and close as well. Okay, I want the word bearer to spawn in first. After that, I think the blood fangs need to be up there as well. We need their main cannon, especially against the judgment. The judgment. Words are hard, you know? And so the battle begins with glorious missiles and even more glorious lasers, which by the looks of things have already done a fair bit of damage. You appear to be missing a barrel. You dropped your barrel, mate. It's over there. So, you look terrifying in every single way. Well, that's just fantastic. I'm very thankful we have shields right now, though, since the White Flyers do love their rapid-fire advanced cannons. Only weirdos would use rapid-fire advanced cannons, of course. You have missiles, really wishing that one of the blood fangs were already awake, but apparently not. That looks so weird. I know it's meant to be like a head, but that just looks so, so weird. Oh, look, a shell. Hello, shell. I get easily distracted. Carry on. Begin the murdering. Spread the word of corn to these non-believers. Show him what a proper heretic looks like. Sadly, someone was just at the door, so I'm sorry if there was a bit of a bell noise in the microphone and if there was a bit of a weird cut. So here we are once again, after about 15 minutes, and let's have a look-see where we were. You are being EMP'd and ultimately destroyed. You are looking fairly healthy, which is actually somewhat terrifying. Continue. Thank you, anti-missile lasers. Had a little bit of lag there. Did something just spawn in? Nope, it seems like perhaps because it's been on pause for 15 minutes, that's not really the best. Okay, a nice chunk of damage there to the back of that craft. My god, that is chewing through that armor. To be fair though, the entire craft is essentially one giant laser. Oh, hello, we are about to be rammed? No, we're not, thankfully. It went straight into the water. Well, that's good for us. Can you please hurry up and kill that thing? 
That would be wonderful. Now, thankfully, there is a huge update coming to From the Depths somewhat soon, in which, there it goes, down into the water, in which the engine is being updated, which means there should be a lot less lag. For a second, I really thought that was sinking. I think it was just a bit of an optical illusion. Don't ram us, don't ram us, don't ram us, don't ram us. Please don't hit the turrets. That would be wonderful. Thank you very much for complying. Incoming shells. Also, we are now out of fuel, so our lasers are going to go a little bit weaker. Well, we're almost out of fuel, I should say. Okay, what are you firing at? There's a new target. Oh, is that the judgment or is that the devourer? That is definitely the devourer. That is the melee vehicle, and doesn't it look amazing? Cram cannon shots and everything else. The laser's doing practically nothing. Does it have smoke, or are those shields the anti-laser shields? So much lag right now. Projectiles everywhere. So much going on. This enemy by itself, by the way, causes some serious lag. Oh, something is AI dead next to us. Pause time. Uh, I think I could probably get that. Okay, let's just prepare ourselves. And go! Excuse me, excuse me. No, no, let me out. Let me out, please! Oh, every time I end up messing that up. Well, that's going to explode. It's in the air anyway. I wouldn't have been able to capture it. Yeah, I need to change this seating area there. It's so awkward to try and get out of when you're moving. Whoa, hello. Don't think you're really meant to do that. I mean, I'm okay that you're doing that because it's messing you up, but... Still. At least that flak gets to fire at something. Man, that thing can take some serious damage. And now we are out of fuel. Our lasers are massively, massively weakened. Slowly but surely whittling this thing away. I'm not sure why the blood fang isn't fire. Oh, because the blood fang has had its AI crippled. When did that happen? There we go, now it's back on. Okay, finally, the enemy has fallen, but that took a ridiculous amount of time, and now the judgement is going to be spawning in. Not looking forward to this, honestly. There it is. Okay, everyone, combat mode. Go, 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 go. Kill this thing as soon as possible. Oh dear god, torpedoes were everywhere then. So glad my shells counter shields, otherwise that would be terrible. Oh my god, they have done so much damage to that blood fang so quickly. Now they're focusing on the second. Yeah, suddenly wooden armor is not looking all that good versus rapid fire guns. Is this what the enemy have been feeling like? This is what the enemy has been feeling like. One of the flat guns is still online from one of the blood fangs, and it's the last thing still firing. Oh, you lovely little things. I mean, it has damaged the barrel a little bit, but it won't do much damage against all that armor. That is such a powerful gun. A new blood fang has joined the fight, or is that one of the older ones? It's hard to tell. They do keep on occasionally going out the water. One has died, though. Oh, incoming! Okay, yep, there's the new blood fang in the corner there. And one of our popcorns are here to try and help. Face the wrath of tiny missiles everywhere! Wow, one hit exactly on the turret, but sadly not enough to destroy it. The other turret has gone, however. Only the main turret now remains. If we can take that out, we probably will win. Sadly, the word bearer is currently being useless because it's, because it's completely run out of fuel. Next time, I will make sure to have a full amount of fuel before getting into the fight. Actually, it has got some fuel back now, I guess because of the refinery. It's just probably too damaged after just, just sitting there the entire fight. I believe in you, Bloodfang! You can do the thing! 
Oh, are you not firing anymore? Oh, you do have the other turret left. I was looking at the wrong side. Hurrah, though, for the tiny little popcorns. You're not the popcorns. You're the cornflakes. Too many corn puns. Is it dead yet? Is it dead yet? It's weapons offline. Okay, weapons are offline. Okay, I no longer feel bad about jumping on board and trying to capture it. Stop, for the love of anything, please stop. Okay, who's closest? Oh, no one's close. No, I'm not losing this one as well. Turning off. Please. A change of plan. We are using one of the blood fangs. Good enough. Uh, let's see if I can... That little micro lag is really getting irritating now. And down we go, turning off the boots so we're no longer connected to that other vehicle, and... Oop. And the camera goes mad. There we go. Hello. So then, good sir, where is your AI? It's right there. Okay. So there, I think. Was it here, or was it over there? It, it depends on which direction we was facing when we just looked up in the sky. Oh, I see surge protectors. Okay, yep, that is the AI, and there is the brain. So it's right there. Annoyingly, it turns out that wasn't the only AI. So, where is the second one? Ah, on the other side. Of course it is. Well, that just makes complete sense, honestly. Minigun again! Just as I claimed the AI, the vehicle died because it was below 80% health and sinking in friendly territory. So we did get a nice chunk of resources from this, but the judgment still died. Now thankfully I do have the blueprint, which means we can go ahead and save this. Although I believe I may need to fully heal it before I can save it properly. I believe that's how it works. Might be wrong there. Either way, I'm definitely keeping this thing. And once again, converting it into a horrible abomination. Um, judgment. Yes, please. Hopefully that's the full version. Yes. Yes, good. Okay, so now we have that. Also, this is going to look really weird in my fleet colours and not the general white colour. So what do we need to do now? We need to allow our lovely... Word bearer to fully get its fuel back so we can start using it again and then we can attack this resource zone to grab that That fight didn't go overly well. It really didn't but I think that's completely my fault The blood fangs are not equipped to deal with very fast firing weapons Obviously it just shreds through wood and will just kill me and then the word bearer who was doing incredibly well at the start Ran out of fuel, so it's completely my fault not the fleet so hopefully in the next fight when I'm actually doing things correct, it should go a lot better using things like the ammo barrel, which can deal with rapid fire guns. Now, whilst everything is healing up after that last battle, and a lot of things really do need to heal up, I do want to cover something briefly, and that's, I believe, in here. People were asking me, where am I currently putting my levels? Because you can have really powerful buffs in the form of your captain buffs and faction buffs. Now, in the last campaign, I had almost all of my points in salvo batteries. This was because I didn't like having so much ammunition in such a small vehicle. It was just annoying me. But now we've moved over to this campaign, I think after the first episode, I moved them all to Brawler and Stormtrooper. This means I'm doing a lot more damage. It's why my blunderbuss can one-shot an, an AI. It's really helpful for that. And then we have Brawler, which makes my health increase and also allows me to regen faster. Now, originally, they were all in Stormtrooper. Today, I have moved over some to Brawler, so hopefully this will make a huge difference. So the Brawler has been in effect since the, the end of the last episode and the start of this one. So that's where they are right now. And I'm only pointing this out because people seem to have a very negative view of spamming... Which one was it? Was it the gunsmiths? It's one of these where you can make your guns ridiculously more powerful than the guns of an enemy, which I don't really like because then you don't learn how certain guns work. It's better to have them all on baseline so you know if your gun is, is simply good or not. 
So yeah, just thought I'd cover that briefly before the end, whilst everything boring is happening in the background. Well, I'm afraid I am now all out of time for today's episode. This is going to take quite a while to fully repair and restock, and then once that happens, we can go ahead and attack the resource zone. But right now, I am just far too tired. I have been recording all day, as you can probably tell, and I need a bit of a break, something to eat, and ultimately, a short break from From the Depths. So if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, a bit more invasion and declaring war on a brand new enemy. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.